Patching your whole hog. In order to communicate with fixtures connected to your whole hog, you'll need to add them to your show file through a process called patching, which is done in the fixture window. To open the fixture window, you can press the Setup key and then select Patch from your main toolbar. Alternatively, you can hold down the Open key and press Fixture. In a new show file, the fixture window will be empty, so we'll need to specify which types of fixtures we will be controlling and how many we have of each. Start by clicking Fixture Schedule. This will open up a new window that will list all of our library of fixtures organized by manufacturer. Let's say we want to add five Studio Command 1200s and three Studio Spot 575s to our show file. I'll scroll down until I find High End Systems and click on it to expand the fixture list. Then I'll scroll down until I find Studio Command 1200. It's important to note that many manufacturers often create multiple versions of one type of fixture in order to suit a variety of needs. For example, the Studio Command is available in a 700 watt version, a 1200 watt version, and also in a tungsten halogen version. Each model has a different DMX footprint, and in order to correctly control the unit, you'll need to be sure you select the correct model. This also applies when fixtures are available in multiple modes. For example, an 8-bit versus 16-bit mode that can be changed in the fixtures menu. Oftentimes, different modes mean a different DMX layout, so check your fixtures user manual to be sure. Now that we've found the Studio Command 1200, I'll select it by clicking on it and then hit the Set key to enter my count. In this example, we have five Studio Command 1200s, so I'll type 5, Enter. Now I'll locate the Studio Spot 575 profile, click Set, and type 3 to add my three Studio Spots. If I wanted to add more fixture types to my show file, I'd locate them in this window and follow the same process to enter their count. Once you have all of your fixtures accounted for, click OK. Now we can see the types of fixtures we've added in spreadsheet form. Here are my studio commands, and here are my studio spots. At this point, they are still not patched because we have not entered the address information. Before doing this, I'd recommend configuring your fixture's user numbers. The user numbers are located in the column titled NUM. The user numbers can be any number you'd like to assign to your unit and does not relate to the fixture's address. These numbers will be how you call up the fixtures in the programmer, so be sure to number them in a way that makes sense to you. You'll notice that there's an asterisk next to some of our user numbers. The asterisk means that more than one fixture type shares the same user number, and it will help to change these. Let's say I want to change the user numbers for the studio spots from 1 to 3 into 101, 102, and 103. All I'll have to do is click the cell I want to change, hit the set key, and type in my new user number and hit enter. Now I have a studio spot 101. This fixture moved to the bottom of the list because this window is showing me the fixtures chronologically. You can also change the user numbers of multiple fixtures all at once. Simply click the first number you wish to change and drag to the last number you wish to change. Hit set and type the first user number. Console will do the rest for you. Since I've changed my user numbers of the studio spots, I no longer have more than one unit with user number one, so there are no asterisks next to my numbers. This means that anytime I select Unit 1, the console will know I'm referring to Studio Command number 1, and anytime I type 103, the console will know I want to work with Studio Spot 103. You can even see this on your command line. This will make patching and programming much easier. So let's patch our first Studio Command. I'll type in the user number, 1, and then press my At key. Doing so will open the Fixture Patch window. You'll need to select a DP2000 to patch to, and also a Universe. You can change your selection simply by clicking on the desired DP in Universe. In this example, my studio command is receiving DMX from Universe 1 of DP2000 number 1, so I'll select DP number 1 and also Universe 1. At this point, I'll type the address of the fixture, which is 1, and then hit Enter. The fixture patch window will close and I'll see my patch information listed in the DP and patch columns of my spreadsheet. Under DP, I can see the fixture is patched to DP2000 number 1. In the patch column, the very first number is the universe the fixture is assigned to, and the number after the colon is the address of that unit. You can also patch a group of sequentially addressed fixtures all at once. I'll do that with my remaining studio commands. I'll select my fixtures by typing 2 through 5 and pressing at to bring up the fixture patch window. These units are also being controlled by universe 1 of DP2000 number 1. This blue section in Universe 1 represents my first studio command, which is already patched at address 1. 
the bottom of this column I can see that my next free address is 15. This is the address of my next studio command, so I'll type 15 and press enter. You can see that we've just patched all four at once, and the console patched each subsequent fixture at the next free address. My studio spots are connected to universe 2 of my DP, and they begin at address 21. Like the studio commands, I've addressed these fixtures sequentially. So I'll type in 101 through 103, press at, and select universe 2 of DP number 1. Now I'll type the starting address of my first studio spot, which is 21, and hit enter. I can see that I've successfully patched these units of DP number 1, and all of my addresses are in universe 2. Because I started my studio spots at address 21, I left 20 channels free at the start of universe 2. When you need to be able to see what channels are available in each universe, you can use the View by DP button. The fixture window will change to show how each universe is patched. In Universe 1, I see my first five studio commands, and I can also see my next free address is 71. In Universe 2, I can see that I have 20 channels free beginning at channel 1, and my next free address after the studio spots is 93. Two other handy tools you can find in View by DP are Clone Universe and Unpatch Universe. You'll use Clone Universe when you want to copy or patch information from one universe to any other universe on any DP. Unpatch Universe allows you to completely unpatch an entire universe instead of unpatching fixture by fixture. Clicking View by DP again will take us back to the normal fixture window. You can print the default view of the fixture window or the View by DP window by clicking the printer icon in the desired view. If you are using HOG3 PC, this will print to your computer's default printer. When you do want to unpatch a single fixture, you can use the Unpatch button. If I wanted to unpatch studio spot number 103, I'll type 103 and click Unpatch. This button will erase the DP, Universe, and Address assignments for user number 103. This does not erase any of the programming stored for user number 103. Now if I did want to erase that studio spot from my show file, then I'd key in 103 and click Remove. Console will ask you to confirm this because when you remove a fixture here, you will erase any and all programming that you've done for that unit. Pressing Auto Palettes allows the program to quickly create palette directory information based on the fixtures that you've added to your show file. In the Auto Palettes window, you can select or deselect palette items that you would like to have created. Auto Palettes is a quick and easy way to get some basic programming into your show file so you can start working with your fixtures right after you've finished patching. To learn more about patching, download the Whole Hog User Manual, available at flyingpig.com.